In an electric motor, electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy in order for the motor to operate. A motor's magnetic field interacts with an electric current in a wire winding in order to generate force in the form of torque that is applied to the shaft of the motor. This is how electric motors work. The electric generator is mechanically identical to an electric motor, but it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy by reversing the flow of power. Direct current DC, motors are powered by batteries, rectifiers, or power grids, or alternating current AC, motors are powered by inverters, generators, or power grids. It is possible to classify electric motors according to their power source type construction, application, and type of motion output. For industrial applications, standardized motors provide a convenient mechanical power source that can be used for ship propulsion, pipeline compression, and pump storage systems with outputs that exceed 100 megawatts. An electric motor is generally designed for continuous rotation or linear movement over a significant distance, as opposed to its size. An electric motor is generally designed to propel external mechanisms, such as a fan or elevator. Electrical power can also be converted into mechanical motion by magnetic solenoids, but they can only produce motion over a limited distance. The first demonstration of electromagnetic energy being converted into motion was Faraday's electromagnetic experiment, in 1821. Electrostatic motors were investigated at the beginning of the 20th century before the development of modern electromagnetic engines. Benjamin Franklin and Scottish monk Andrew Gordon described the first electric motors in the 1740s with simple electrostatic devices. The theoretical principle behind them, Coulomb's law, was discovered but not published, by Henry Cavendish in 1771. It was discovered independently by Charles Augustin de Coulomb in 1785, who published it so that it is known by his name today. Due to the difficulty of generating the high voltages they required, electrostatic motors were never used for practical purposes. Alessandro Volta invented the electrochemical battery in 1799, allowing persistent electric currents to be produced. Hans Christian Ersted discovered in 1820 that an electric current creates a magnetic field, which can exert a force on a magnet. In just a few weeks, André Marie Ampère developed his first formulation of the electromagnetic interaction and presented his Ampère's force law, which describes how a current and a magnetic field produce mechanical force. In the basement of the Royal Institution, Michael Faraday demonstrated the effect with rotary motion for the first time on the 3rd of September 1821. As a current was passed through a free hanging wire dipped in mercury, the wire rotated around the permanent magnet, demonstrating that the current created a close circular magnetic field. His findings were published in the Quarterly Journal of Science, and he sent pocket-sized models of his device to colleagues around the world so they too could witness electromagnetic rotations. Barlow's wheel was an early refinement of Faraday's demonstration, although homopolar motors and similar designs remained unsuitable for practical use until the late 19th century. A Hungarian physicist named Niels Jedlik started experimenting with electromagnetic coils after solving the technical problems of continuous rotation with the commutator. While only used for teaching, Jedlik demonstrated the first DC motor containing the three main components, stator, rotor, and commutator in 1828. In this device, the magnetic fields of both the stationary and revolving components were produced solely by the current flowing through their windings. In 1832, William Sturgeon invented the first DC electric motor with a commutator capable of turning machinery. Following Sturgeon's work, a commutator-type direct current electric motor was built by American inventor Thomas Davenport and Emily Davenport, which she patented in 1837. The motors ran up to 600 revolutions per minute and powered machine tools and a printing press. Due to the high cost of primary battery power, the motors were commercially unsuccessful and bankrupted Davenport. Several inventors followed Sturgeon in the development of DC motors, but all encountered the same battery cost issues. As no electricity distribution system was available at the time, no practical commercial market emerged for these motors. 
Prussian slash Russian Maritz von Jacobi created the first real rotating electric motor in May 1834 after many more or less successful attempts with relatively weak rotating and reciprocating apparatus. It developed a remarkably high rate of mechanical output power and Jacobi improved his motor four years later in September 1838 so that it could drive a boat with 14 passengers across a wide river with its impressive mechanical output power. His motor set a world record and was improved four years later. It was also in 1839 that other developers managed to build motors with similar and then higher performance. It was also in 1855 that Jedlik built a model electric vehicle using similar principles to those used in his electromagnetic self-rotors. In 1864, Antonio Pochinotti first described the ring armature, which had symmetrically grouped coils connected to a commutator, whose brushes delivered practically non-fluctuating current. Zeno Gram, in 1871, reinvented Pochinotti's design and adopted some Werner Siemens solutions to create the first commercially successful DC motors. Siemens announced the reversibility of the electric machine in 1867, and Pochinotti observed it in 1869, which led to the development of DC machines. Graham accidentally demonstrated it on the occasion of the 1873 Vienna World's Fair, when he connected two such DC devices up to two kilometers from each other, using one of them as a generator and the other as a motor. The drum rotor was introduced by Friedrich von Heffner Altneck of Siemens and Halsk to replace Pochinotti's ring armature in 1872, thus improving machine efficiency. The laminated rotor was introduced by Siemens and Halsk the following year, achieving reduced iron losses and increased induced voltages. In 1880, Jonas Wenstrom provided the rotor with slots for housing the winding, further increasing the efficiency. In 1886, Frank Julian Sprague invented the first practical DC motor, a non-sparking device that maintained relatively constant speed under variable loads. Other Sprague electric inventions about this time greatly improved grid electric distribution, prior work done while employed by Thomas Edison, allowed power from electric motors to be returned to the electric grid, provided for electric distribution to trolleys via overhead wires and the trolley pole, and provided control systems for electric operations. This allowed Sprague to use electric motors to invent the first electric trolley system in 1887-88 in Richmond, Virginia, the electric elevator and control system in 1892, and the electric subway with independently powered centrally controlled cars. The latter was first installed in 1892 in Chicago by the South Side Elevated Railroad, where it became popularly known as the L. As a result of Sprague's motor and related inventions, electric motors for industry became widely used. However, the development of electric motors of acceptable efficiency was hindered. The air gap between the stator and rotor has been overlooked for several decades. Efficient designs have a relatively small air gap. St. Louis motors, long used to illustrate motor principles, are inefficient for the same reasons, as well as not resembling modern motors.